So um, for the last few questions, uh, I just wanted to um, go over uh, 14 through 19 here. Um, but I wanted you to look at the bottom of this sample uh, test that I got. It says there are no calculators allowed during testing. This sample test is designed to give you an idea of what kind of questions will be on the exam. The actual exam is more difficult than the sample test. So that being said, let's go over this one and then I will try to uh, make one final fitter video for the plumbers, pipe fitters, um, and I'll try to even um, add a few more difficult things on there. Okay, so let's uh, look at 14. It says, how much is the circumference of a circle whose diameter is seven feet? Um, and they've even provided the circumference formula there. Uh, circumference is pi times um, diameter. Um, sometimes you'll even see that written as uh, two pi r if you're given the radius. Remember the diameter is just double the radius. Uh, in this particular one, they've given us a radius of seven. So the circumference is just um, pi times seven. So we can just do 3.14 times seven. Now, because we're not allowed to use a calculator, let's just go over that multiplication. You're gonna do seven times four, you're gonna get 28. You're gonna put the eight down, you're gonna carry the two. Now you're gonna move on to the next place. Seven times one is seven. Uh, whatever you've carried at the top, just add on. So that's gonna be nine. And then seven times three is 21, so bring that down. Now, um, here's, let me remind you about decimals. However many digits are behind the decimal place, we're gonna take the decimal point here and we're gonna move it that same number of digits. So in this particular one, we need to move the decimal place over two. So our final answer is a uh, circumference. That's the distance around our circle is 21.98 feet. Some other formulas I would probably know, make sure you know, you know, the area of a circle is pi r squared. You would probably use that same 3.14. Okay, let's take a look at 15. It says, Mr. Franklin is one third as old as his father. Um, so I'm gonna call Mr. Franklin M and his father F. <laughs> so it, that first statement says that Mr. Franklin is one third as old as his father. So that if we multiplied those two things together, uh, one third times F, we would get Franklin's age. Okay, it says the sum of their ages is 100. So we know that if we add the two together, that's what sum refers to. Sorry, let's do what I said. And I was saying 100 and I just wrote 100, I apologize. So um, that's the equations we get. Now, how do you solve an, a, a, a system of equations? Let me remind you. If you know one fact that's very clear cut that the, um, Mr. Franklin is a third of his father. We can take out the M and replace it with one third. So one third the father plus the father equals 100. Now let's remind you how to add those two together. Um, well, let's go a different route. If you don't like fractions, many people don't. If you know the denominator and the only denominator or the least common denominator of all the fractions in the problem is three. Let's multiply everything by three so good things happen. We get one F plus three F equals 300. We get four F equals 300. So F is 300 divided by four. So the father is 75 years old. Now, here you can check your work. If the father is 75 years old, then the son is a third of that, or 25. And do they add up to 100? Yes. Now, you can use logic for problems like this. You don't have to do algebra. Um, you know, you can start out and think, oh, well, what if, what if uh, the son is 20? That's a third of the father, so the father would be 60. That only adds up to 80. Oh, so they must be a little older to add up to 100. 
So you can use logic. You don't have to use algebra. Um, this is the more um, algebraic sort of notation. Um, so the sum of their ages would be 100. Uh, Mr. Franklin's a third of his father. So there you go. Okay. Uh, let's move on to 16 is an algebraic equation. So uh, any type of algebraic equation, you're going to simplify each side as much as you possibly can. So you notice here how we've got all that stuff we can do there. So negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6, plus another 2 is negative 4. So let's make that negative 4 equals 2 minus x. And I'm going to write that, what we've got right here. Okay. Now, to solve an algebraic equation, once you have both sides as simple as possible, you want to start doing some moving things around. So I would probably suggest moving this to the other side. Now, many of my students make mistakes because they want to subtract uh, that or because that's a minus, they want to add it. Which do you do? Well, just look in front here. That is a positive 2. So to, to undo that, we are going to subtract 2 from both sides. That will take that 2 away. So we're going to get negative 6 equals negative x. You'll notice that the negative just comes down with it. Now, what do you do next? Well, we have to divide both sides by negative 1. Please remember that two negatives divide and become a positive. And we find that x is 6. So there's an equation, a little bit of algebra there in 16. Let's take a look at 17. 17 um, um, reminds us that you should know some of your math conversions. So like you should know that uh, one foot is 12 inches. Um, and in this case, we would need to know that um, uh, one yard is three feet. And so any of those conversions would be good to know. This next one here says, how many square feet are in a square yard? Uh, now, there's a few different ways that I can show this to you, but I think the easiest way is to draw a little picture. And I apologize, my picture isn't going to be great, but it'll get the job done. Okay. So, given that what we talked about in the last one, that is three feet in a yard. That is three feet in a yard. So if you look, if we have a grid that was one yard by one yard, then we would have three feet see you talking to yourself. by three feet. So we would technically have nine square feet is equal to one square yard. So if there's three in a square, uh, one yard in a linear, uh, one yard is three a linear feet, then square yard is nine, just go three by three. If you were doing some kind of uh, volume, you would go three by three by three. So like a cubic yard is 27 square feet, or cubic feet, sorry, cubic feet. Oh, that's where we're getting to, okay. So there, if we make this three-dimensional, and I apologize for my drawing skills here, but you'll get the idea. I think we can do it here. <laughs> I'm not the best at art, but you can see that it's three by three by three. So that's why that is 27 uh, cubic feet which you can write like that, or you can write cubic feet, is one cubic yard. So there you go. Um, and I will post this, and I'll probably post one more when I get the chance. Thanks.